This is Sebastian Mendel Martinez for MMA Net here with Cage Warriors reigning featherweight champion Mads Burnell. So Mads, you uh, you scored a huge achievement winning this belt uh, when you defeated Dean Truman. Now, you know, it's been some time since you won it. Looking back uh, from then until now, how has life changed and what exactly is champ life like? Uh, life hasn't changed at all. It's still the same. I'm well, still... You got some new bling bling. Yeah, I got, some, I got some new bling bling, but still training like all the time. It's the same as before, yeah. <laughs> and looking back at your performance, I mean, Dean Truman is a guy who has been with Cage Warriors for quite a while. He's kind of like one of their guys. Uh, how do you feel about your performance in the fight, and how do you look back on the whole experience? I think, like, Dean, he was he was super awkward, so he was pretty hard to read. So the whole first round, I was li really just trying to get, a, get, like, his looks, what he was doing, taking my time, because I knew it was a five-round five round fight, and, I'm, and I had seen his fight with Aiden Lee, where Aiden tried just like of all he could just to take Dean down and then he killed himself cardio wise right mm -hmm. so I knew I would just have to take my time and uh, look what he was doing and then yeah break him down little by little walk him to the cage all the time take him down just cook the beans yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right and You've been booked now for your first title defense versus Steve Amable. Uh, was he the first person offered the title shot? Did you have any say in that? Or was it just basically Cage were saying, this is the guy you're defending against? Uh, they, they just asked, like, uh, yeah, you have to defend your title against Steve. And I was like, okay. And yeah, that was basically it. And how do you see him as an opponent and as a title challenger? Like, how do you weigh up his skills? And, uh, how, you know, how do you see him as an opponent overall? He, he seems like a pretty good opponent overall. He seems pretty physically strong. And he's a solid boxer. A uh, pretty solid boxer, more conventional than uh, than Dean was. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I think it's going to be a good match. And one thing that you seem to just be an expert with is uh, the necktie. Uh, I mean, we've seen it now a couple of times. And we saw recently your teammate Ila Zabelli win his fight by a uh, Japanese necktie. Did you have any influence there, perhaps? Uh, yes and no. I don't. I don't know. Like he's in there. I wasn't there to coach him. But yeah, when we train together, we learn from each other and. Maybe pick that up from me, I don't know. And do you think that maybe this will start being one of your signature submissions, the longer you have to fight game you get, or do you feel like switching it up a little bit? As long as they give it to me, I'm going to take it. Like, yeah. So, And they've been giving it to me the last two times, so why not take it? If it's there, it's there. And now we've got a Danish Cage Warriors champion, the UFC is in, is in Denmark for, uh, for the first event uh, here in this country. How do you feel about the overall state of Danish MMA? Like, would you say that now is basically it, it's starting to really hit its stride, or do you feel like maybe there's some work left to do? Uh, I think it's starting to hit its stride right now. And uh, Søren, it just came out today that Søren Bak got signed by yeah. Bellator, and uh, Delby is fighting uh, UFC, and Mark is fighting UFC. I'm the Cage Warriors champ, so yeah, man. And Louis is coming up. There's a lot of good up and comers. Demir is in the UFC. Penny, like, yeah, there's there's a lot of good up and comers. And obviously, Artsuave is one of the premier gyms in the country, which has produced so much hardcore talent. Who would you say is the next, perhaps, Artsuave talent that might get into the big leagues? 100% Louis Gleesman. Yeah. yeah, he's already doing good in, in Cage Warriors. He is a freaking beast. Beast, yeah. He's like, yeah. He's he's just a beast. Beast. I have nothing else to say. Mm. Yeah. And it seems you said that nothing's really changed with Champ Life and stuff like that. And it, you know, you still definitely seem to be the same sort of overall person. Once you start getting higher and higher into the leagues, do you feel like there's might be some pressure of you know you have to be you know, sense yourself, or perhaps change your attitude I have or anything? To what? Like, yeah, exactly. You don't even know the meaning of it, right? Sensor. Mm. Uh, <laughs> I probably have, but yeah, pressure is a privilege. So yeah, I'll take it as it comes. And from your last performance until this one, is there anything particular that you've been working on? Is there any holes that you found in your own game where you feel like I want to sharpen this up a little bit? I usually just try to be become better overall, like just trying to become 1% better every day. That's my goal every day I wake up. And do you feel like you've achieved that goal so far? You can never be perfect, but yeah, I'm working towards being just 1% better every every freaking day. All right, well, it'll be definitely quite a few percentages better when you do take on Steve Amobile in that case. Uh, what is your prediction for a fight, and what do you feel the fans in attendance should expect? I don't predict anything, and I don't expect anything. Like I said before, if you expect anything going into a fight, you're stupid. <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, there you go. I guess fans should not really expect anything then? Yeah, yeah expect a nice fight, but... I'm not expecting. Well, we know that anything. already. Yeah, yeah. Expect a good fight, a good scrap, but I'm not expecting anything particularly from from uh, Steve because, like Tyson said, everybody have a plan until they get punched in the face. So I just go in there. I focus on me, and whatever happens, happens. 
And what's your message for fans, both Danish and worldwide, that have followed you on this journey from, you know, your humble beginnings to today where you're standing here with the Cage Warriors world title? For the dudes that follow me, like, thank you. And for everyone else, just keep watching. Right, there you go. Keep watching and you will be sure to see some Danish dynamite when Mads Brunel takes on Steve Amable in the uh, Cage Warriors Featherweight Championship. Thank you very much as always.